Hi, this is Will Reddick with Grassroots Economics, and uh, today I'm going to talk about a training that we did last week in a rural community uh, called Miani that's in Kuala, um, which is about an hour and a half from any kind of main city. Um, this is sort of a village center where they're selling shrimp that they the local fishermen get, and that's a water tank uh, getting runoff. Um, Sarafu is the name that we've kind of used as the generic uh, sort of aid-based currency that we've developed, a community inclusion currency. These guys have a lot of projects they're doing like uh, 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 chicken farming, um, tree planting, they're doing some construction around the area too for more community centers, um, and they have a, a maize mill inside this building right here. And They've gotten support from uh, various organizations like Red Cross and Green World Campaign over the years, um, and uh, they've sort of put all of their community activities as well as a lot of the work they do um, together into uh, this sort of circular economy um, using a, a community inclusion currency um, that's called Sarafu. Now this training is about taking that community currency that they've had for quite some time, pulling out the, um, the reserve behind it and putting it into their own currency. Um, and coming up with the rules on how that would work, how would they distribute out it out to people. And so these are all um, various kind of community members and leaders from different uh, organizations or uh, community-based um, organizations or uh, tabletop banks within the area. Um, and so the first exercise that they're going to do is go through and look at what are the resources in their community. They're going to look at what are the... Uh, the things that they buy and sell on sort of a daily, weekly basis, um, and then also look at which are local and non-local. And then they're going to go through kind of a bartering exercise. That's This is all really kind of just review for the community. Um, when we go into new communities, we also do this. But in this case, the, these are people who are already using a community currency, and they're getting ready to now kind of create their own. And so th this list from the top is you know flour, water, sugar, um, charcoal, firewood, education, vegetables, uh, bicycle or motorcycle transport. Um, they've got tea on there. They had clothes um, and oil as well. And so now people are, have written down on these blue slips of paper what it is that they sell in the community. Um, they're also going to be writing down kind of the prices on the back. And then the beans represent their community currency. Um, the one that they've been using for a while now. So this is Sarafu at this point. Um, each one of those beans is worth 100 Sarafu, and they're basically selling these goods and services and writing down the price on the back that they sold it for or are going to sell it for. Um, and this is just, this, this basic exercise is kind of a review of the sort of core concept being that a lot of people, the whole community has goods and services and support and care that they can offer each other. They just don't have the money to do it with. And so creating a barter credit um, is a way for them to sort of support each other through through hard times when there's no Kenyan shillings. Um, you know, we don't we don't talk about this as as a replacement for Kenyan shillings. It's a it's a it's something there to fill the gap when Kenyan shillings are missing. Um, and so this is you know, this is the idea of kind of simulating a week or a month worth of trade in the community. And then we're going to sort of uh, um, tally up here how much people have in their balances at the end of the exercise. So Kwekwe there at the top has 800, which means that she sold a lot of her goods and services, those blue piece, blue slips of paper. And um, she has more than everyone else, and someone at the bottom there has zero, which means they, they basically spent all of their little beans, their community currency, and they bought other stuff in the community. And she, Ruth there is also writing down some extra stuff that people uh, found that was missing and were selling in the community. So that exercise, that previous one, it was basically just to give them an idea of a mapping of the resources in the community and talk about basic trade of the Sarafa, which they already do. And it sort of opens up the door to talk about questions like, why are they only getting 400? Um, why can't they make their own? What would that look like if they were to make their own? And so it's just, it, it's sort of a warm up exercise. Now this next part is basically the groups going through and having that discussion on what it would mean to sort of create their own community currency. How much would they create? What is sort of the backing behind it? 
Um, and so there's two kinds of backing that they're talking about. One is um, um, commitments of goods and services, and another is also some collateral. And so that's going to be like the sarafu itself, uh, the, the, the money behind the sarafu or the assets behind the sarafu get added into this collateral. Um, that previous board, they're also looking at when they distribute it, um, when they actually create their own token, how does it get divided up uh, among the people who are contributing as well as into the community. And so this, this board here right now is basically um, a commitment from the community group um, to basically say that for every token that's being created, there's some backing here in terms of goods and services behind it. So each one of these people is basically saying, I'm willing to put my flower behind this, so I will accept it for a certain amount um, of my flower. And everyone's also putting in some sarafu into this as well. So in a way, there's a commitment in this column here um, it, to accepting it in the future, the, the new token that they're creating. And there's another column here, which is um, them putting in some uh, asset as a collateral um, for that. And then what's going to happen is that every every uh, for every uh, amount of these commitments, that's how many tokens get created. So this 200, 200 here is basically that half go to the person doing the commitments and half goes to the community. And they're there to come up with community projects. It's par partially what they were already discussing as well of what are those community projects um, that they would like these tokens to go to. Um, so, so in the end, everyone's kind of signing here in terms of you know their their commitments to accepting the the tokens that they're creating and they're also putting in some collateral there in essentially kenyan shillings basically they're taking their sarafu they're pulling the sarafu apart which you know there there's essentially kenyan shillings behind that sarafu and so all of that goes into this board here so this board basically represents uh, a blockchain contract so all of their kenyan shillings um Right now, we're, we're storing that as a uh, stable coin in DAI, um, and that's what's being stored on the blockchain here. And so their tokens, which in this case now are these beans, are, um, are, are essentially bonded to um, the, the coins that are in uh, on the blockchain. And so basically, this represents all of their, their collateral that they put in here on this board. So everyone's putting in, let's say, 100 here. So each one of those tokens represents 100. And if they want to pull that out, they have to put in some beans into that board. And we're calling that sometimes a bondometer because it's essentially like a bonding curve. So as they put in beans into that board, they can pull out uh, some Kenyan shillings. Okay, And, and I, I'm kind of just going through the ropes with them um, kind of briefly here and then they're all kind of practicing this idea so so at this point now they've pulled out all of their um, their collateral and they're also able to add Kenyan shillings back into this um, to mint additional uh, CICs or additional tokens and and so now they're gonna do the same exercise they did before um, the difference being that they can basically cash in or cash out using that bonding curve there and so someone is going to be sitting there kind of watching that uh, bonding curve. Um, this woman um, here on the bottom right, also she was given the role of only accepting Kenyan shillings for her products. These are sort of imported products. I, I believe she was selling clothes. And, and so people can come in here and exchange their beans. The, the more that they pull out of this, the more Kenyan shillings they pull out of it, the more it costs to pull out from it. Right, so there's sort of diminishing returns. So if for every hundred you pull out here, you have to add a bit more beans as we go down this board here. Um, and so there's an incentive um, to basically say, let me buy something locally rather than pulling out from uh, our collateral. And vice versa, there's a potential incentive to add more collateral there once the, the, the price has dropped fairly low on, on that board. But then remember, all of these people are also still buying and selling or, or selling their goods and services with some commitment as well and so that keeps it back up this the, this last woman that was being shown here in blue she was also um doing the community project stuff so she got a lot of the tokens for the community projects and she's selling 
or paying people for labor in the community. Um, and one of those community projects is also doing loans. So this is something that they that is very common in these groups that they're giving out loans in the community currency. Um, and and generally their people are paying fines or interests uh, to pay back those loans, but that goes into their own personal account as well. So it's not sort of extractive uh, lending in that case. And this is basically, um, uh, the group just tallying up how many tokens do they have at, at the end of this, how many Kenyan shillings do they have, and how much community work has been done. And so, you know, in some ways, like the, the amount of community work done is, um, uh, you know, one of our metrics in terms of, you know, what, what's working really well in these currencies in the end. Um, and, and the amount of tokens they have, it's still the same sort of issue of like, are they balancing themselves out? You know, this person, this was the person who was only accepting Kenyan shillings. You know, other people, they got their Kenyan shillings and, and they were going sort of in and out of uh, the bonding curve. Um, and so that's, that, this is basically to give people sort of a gut feeling of what it's like to use a bonding curve um, and what kind of commitments need to be put in place to sort of hatch that uh, system to, to start it out. So this this is sort of representing a document now that what, what's going to happen after this training is that all of these guys are going to go back to their groups. There'll be additional follow-up training in their in their individual communities. This was sort of a mixture of several communities. Um, and they're going to come up with essentially like a constitution or bylaws for their existing constitutions that they already have as groups. And they're going to, so Gina La Token, they're going to come up with a name for that token. They're going to come up with various goals for that token, Malengo. <clears throat> they're going to come up with Miradis, which are like projects related to those tokens. So basically, you know, how much money do people get for doing community service work or helping the elderly? They're also going to assign maybe a few people to manage those funds. Um, they're going to come up with this this uh, a bonding board here. So this is their name, the products they sell. This is their commitments, how much of those products they're willing to sell over a time period in the local currency that they're creating. Um, this is the mana is their collateral. So this will be basically how much Sarafu they're putting into this. That's our kind of bootstrapping token. Um, this is how much CIC they're going to get back. Um, and this is going to be how much goes into the community projects, these, these projects. So the amount they get back in the community projects, this will be equal to um, how much they're committing. And the collateral has to be a quarter of that um, as well. So if there's 400 here in terms of CIC being created for them and the community, that means there's 400 in commitments and there's 100 Sarafu worth of collateral. And that's sort of who we're replacing with um, the the die. So essentially, this is the, this is market value to, to Kenyan shillings here. Um, finally, they're they're coming up with like, yeah, this is who is standing for the different projects, who manages this these funds down here, um, and then this is also this is going to be basically how are disputes mitigated. So if some people are not accepting it anymore for their goods and services. Um, is that can the chief come in here? So there's some signing in terms of uh, who's going to be regulating or who's going to be uh, uh, arbitrating disputes. Um, and so that's basically it in a nutshell. They're going to go back to their communities. They're going to come up with with uh, these bylaws on how they're going to create their token. How are they going to distribute it? How are they going to back it? Um, we do some auditing process with that to make sure you know within the community also like we get the chief to help. Um, see that their commitments are real. Like if someone is saying that they're putting in 10,000 shillings of goats, do they actually have goats? Um, once that all checks out and the community has all kind of signed off as well as the local chief, um, those tokens are created. So we go into um, the blockchain, we create this token right now, and we, uh, we, we take some dye from, from the Sarafu that they had already. Um, and we put that die into their reserve and we create these tokens here and then we distribute them out as they as they wished right so based on you know who, who's done the commitments and then um, you know these these community projects here um, and that's basically it. the the community then can start trading they can also now cash out by basically they send their community currency um, to a special account that account uh, basically records that, 
pulls out the the die that's behind their community currency and turns that into Kenyan shillings in the form of e-money, uh, so like M-Pesa, and M-Pesa goes back to the user, and vice versa. M-Pesa can go into that account, it'll get converted into die, and then more tokens will be created and then given uh, to whoever put that die in. And Red Cross can also come in and help support, and, and other donors can come in and help support uh, these communities in this way too, by adding reserve to that uh, community fund and then distributing those tokens uh, based on that. So. That's, that's basically where we are in training right now. And uh, over the next few months, um, these communities will come together with their uh, kind of pool of Sarafu that they've, that they've uh, collected together and uh, create their own currencies. So we're really excited to see how that goes. And you know, we're, this is all very much learning, learning process. And uh, these guys are basically um, these first groups that are sort of piloting this are going to be the ones teaching the next groups and so on. So very much kind of trainers of trainers. So great. Have a good one. Bye.